Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and in this video, we are about to discuss the dining philosopher's problem and also propose the implementation of a solution for the same. You can find more information about this on the Wikipedia page, which I've linked below. And uh, yeah, the dining philosopher's problem is an age old synchronization exercise in which five philosophers sitting on a round table with the five uh, fork, spoons, chopsticks, either of them in between them alternate randomly between eating and thinking. The food in the bowls is assumed to be infinite and as long as the philosophers don't starve, they are considered to be immortal. There are no prerequisites to thinking, but in order to eat, the individual philosopher must have access to both the forks on either side of the table, of his side. This is rather a tricky problem to visualize, so I've linked a video uh, showcasing it in the description. So the crux of the dining philosopher's problem is to allow the people on the table to successfully eat and think by taking turns for picking up and putting down the forks until the end of time. If there is a deadlock or a supposed live lock, they die. A deadlock can occur when each of the philosophers supposedly has picked up the right fork and is waiting for the left fork to become available. None of the other philosophers are giving up their fork and hence none of them are getting the other fork. This leads to resource starvation and they all die. This problem can be solved by putting a condition that if a fork is held by a philosopher for a long enough time and that he's not getting access to the other fork, then the philosopher will effectively time out and uh, put down the fork that he currently has. This will make the fork available to the other philosophers whose eating processes are being held up. But suppose all the philosophers want to eat and all of them pick up the left fork and time out at the same time and then pick up the right fork and repeat the process over and over again. This will effectively lead to, a, lead to something called the live lock, halting the eating of food by the philosophers and lead to their deaths eventually. This problem can be solved by putting a random timeout duration, which is pretty easy to do. Now let's uh, look at the code. We start by importing the random and the scanner classes for generating uh, random numbers and also for a scanning input from the user respectively. So in the main function, all I've done is created an object for the um, current class, named it obj and called the start thinking eating a function after the init function. I didn't call the functions directly uh, without creating the object because I didn't want to deal with all the static mumbo jumbo and uh, it's easy it's easy to do it like this that's better eh? um, the idea is that the philosophers and the forks are individual objects which would interact with each other the philosophers would run on their own threads and uh, and try to synchronously access the member variables of the fork objects without running into inconsistencies so for making those objects, we would need to create the fork and philosophers classes. So let's start with the fork class. The fork class has two important member variables, which are fork ID and status. The fork ID is needed to reference the fork correctly, the correct fork which we want. And the status is a boolean which indicates whether the fork is in use or put down. In our case, when the status is true, the fork is available to use and when the fork uh, when the status is false the fork is in use so if a philosopher wants to access the fork or use it he must wait until the status becomes true in the constructor of the class we are just setting the fork id to the one that is passed while creating the object and the initial value of status is true as it is available for use when you create it immediately we have two functions uh, which are in the fork class and they are pick and free. The free function sets the status of the current fork to true, which means that the philosopher who had it has put it down. The pick function uh, does something a little bit more complicated. The basic idea here is that the philosopher has called this function because he wants to pick it up, which in turn means that the status of the particular fork must be set to false. But what if the current status is already false? This means that the fork which this philosopher wants to use is already in use. 
So he has to wait until it becomes available again. And that is what is happening. The while loop here checks if the status is equal to false. If the status of the fork is not false, the philosopher is made to wait for a random amount of time and then made to try again. The counter is used to keep track of how many times the philosopher tries to access the fork. And if he fails enough times to do that and goes over the wait until the random timeout which we set, he has to let go of the fork that he is holding by returning false. But if the status does become true, then he picks it up by making the status false and returns true to indicate that the fork was indeed picked up by him. The synchronized keyword which we use will organize the access of the philosopher threads to the status variable so that the data consistency is not totally tarnished and is kept intact. That is very important. The philosopher class, as we see, has a philosopher ID and also containers to reference the left and right forks that the philosopher wants to pick up. The constructor initializes the philosopher ID passed during the object creation. There are three functions in the philosopher class that are start, think and eat which is what the philosophers would do over their lifetime. The start function takes the references to the left and right spoons and assigns them to its object member variable counterparts. The next while loop enables the infinite alternate thinking and eating of the philosophers as the new random const a construct keeps generating either true or false. Let's start with the think function. It doesn't really do much except make the philosopher think for a random amount of time, which is actually thread.sleep, while printing some logs before and after sleeping. The eat function is the crux of the problem. Um, if it, it, it starts off by defining the two booleans, right pick and left pick. You will understand their use momentarily. After printing out some logs, we call the pick function and um, with the philosopher ID and store the return value in the left pick. Now, if the pick of the left spoon is successful, then the left pick would have returned true in it and vice versa. If the value was true, the philosopher would, would move on to pick up the next fork. But if it was false, then the picking up of the fork was a failure and the philosopher would have to stop eating before it even started. Obviously, if this happened after he had already picked up one fork, he would obviously have to let go of that fork and that is why we see in the next part of the code. If the philosopher was successfully in picking up both the forks, he would eat the food, that is um, the thread.sleep function, for a random amount of time until he had to put down the spoons, the free function. Uh, now that you know a bit about the functions in the two classes, uh, do we will now move on to tying up loose ends and putting everything together. In the init function at the top, we start by taking input from the user. As we need to actually have the number of philosophers that we need to simulate, the number must be positive and has to be greater than 1. We have uh, put the necessary safeguards in place with the try-catch block guarding against erroneous input and um, the if statement checks if the number is less than 2. Uh, once we get that number, we initialize an array of philosophers, forks, and thread objects. The philosopher objects are instances of the philosopher class and have their own IDs incremented by one and put in as references by the constructor. The same process occurs with the fork objects. The important thing to remember here is that each philosopher and each fork is an individual object and does not share member variables. Each philosopher runs on his own thread and wants to access the status variable of the forks next to him when he wants to eat. The start think eating function basically does the job of starting the respective threads of the philosophers and assigning them the forks that they would have reference to. The reference forks are calculated by having the left fork be on the same index as that of the philosopher in the array and the right index be one minus that provided uh, the number is greater than zero or else uh, the index is looped around and assigned the last one. We use the final keyword with index 
as we cannot use a variable that is likely to change inside a thread from outside because that could lead to data inconsistencies. Once that is done, we start the thread by calling the thread.start function and that is it. So I, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and share and see you later guys. Everything else is in the description. So yeah, look at it. Even the code.